This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Baruch Hashem. There is a very um, deep answer and also simple one um, to many of the questions that we're struggling with in this lifetime. Many times people are finding themselves facing challenges and, and difficulties that, uh, that leaves them with their mouth open don't know what to say, don't know how to explain, don't know how to understand even what did, uh, what did just happened to them in their lives. And uh, a lot of, uh, in a lot of situations, people are just uh, really losing their faith uh, because of the difficulties and because of those challenges. Now, there is a very deep explanation in the Zohar Kadosh, the book uh, of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, in Parashat Mishpatim, there is um, a very, very deep explanation over there about the secret of um, different lifetimes, of coming back to this world of insanity and, uh, and paying back on mistakes or balancing the, um, the imbalance of last lifetime and coming to this lifetime again, to this world again with the intention to fix. And many people are asking what that kid did that he came to this world blind from birth or what that kid did that he came to that family that the father is uh, like drug addicted and whatever what the kid did that you can punish him that deserved that kind of punishment. And once I gave an answer on that topic, someone asked me, how can it be on a very hard case, on a real, real hard case? And someone asked me, how come, how can you say that this person deserved it was about a kid that had been raped and been molested for years and suffered in the Holocaust, crazy sorrow, and, and also been abused by his father, something sick. After the Holocaust, had been, been raped by his father, something very, very sick. And when someone asked me, how can you explain this case? Like, what, you're talking about an eight years old kid in the time of the Holocaust, how? So I told him, look, I'm, I, I, I'm just gonna ask you about his father. His father, after all the sorrow that his child experienced in the Holocaust, chose to rape him after all of his pain and sorrow. So which kind of punishment you would give to the father so, of course, to suffer the same sorrow that his kids suffer will be the basic, like at least that, right? To feel what he caused to his child, at least, a minimum. That's before punishment. That just to balance, it's before of, 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 of fines. It's only the basic, like what did you did, that's at least what that you should receive, what you should pay. So. I cannot answer on that kid because I don't have those eyes of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai or the Saba Mishpatim from the Parashat Mishpatim. But I can at least understand how can one person be punished so badly if he did things that are, are, are in, that, uh, in that weight, in, 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 that are so, so horrible. Now, we're not here to judge and we're not here to explain and to give explanations. We're here only to discuss and to try to find advice for our lives to deal with certain situations that leave us with our mouths open and not knowing how to deal with them. So, in the Zohar Kadosh, in the parasha Mishpatim, there is a righteous man, a very big righteous man, that they're calling him Saba, a grandfather, a grand, grand, grandpa. 
and he it's a it's a name for for an old person and there is a very very interesting character to this righteous man that is telling us all the stories and and revealing all the foundation of of our nation to to have an access to this wisdom that is discussing and referring to to lifetimes and to come coming back to this world again and again so he's learning all of that wisdom and teaching all of his teachings while quoting and bringing evidence from the verses in Parshat Mishpatim and um, and there is something very unique about this person um, right after he's starting to to open those verses and to explain how the verses are actually not talking about the slave or not talking about that child, just explaining that that child is an aspect of a person that came back again to this world and on and he's going very deep. So suddenly this old righteous man starts screaming. And it's written that he's screaming in the Zohar Kadosh. It's, it's written that he's screaming, Oy vey! What I'm gonna do, and now what I'm gonna do, and he's screaming and crying and shouting. And it's a whole deep discussion that he is having with himself, confronting his own fear of dealing with the responsibility of diving into such deep water to bring out the secrets of the Torah, the ancient secrets of Hashem. Um, to us, to, to, to the next generations. And he's confronting himself and asking himself, why in the world did you do that to risk yourself so much and to throw yourself into the depths of the sea, to places that the waves are, are closing on you and, and covering you and you might drown. And he's saying, even Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that he's much greater than I, that he's much bigger than I, stronger than I, he would never risk himself like that to go to the depths of the sea. But then he's going even deeper with his inner conversation, dialogue. And he's saying, but remind yourself, old, old Saba, Saba Zaken, remind yourself, old grandpa, that always in your life Hashem was backing you up and helping you to complete what that you wanted to complete and to achieve what you wanted to achieve. So you must strengthen yourself and not give up. And he's saying, so I'm going to explain to you the next verse. And then he's going into that explanation. What happens if a husband, for an example, cheated on his wife and went with another woman or whatever, or a woman that went with another man, and what happens because of that? And the child, or if the husband died in the war and the wife, she's getting married with the brother of the husband or whatever and deep deep explanation how the soul coming back in another lifetime in Yibum or whatever many deep concepts that are being discussed over there and after a while that he's getting into explaining the next layer the next level of of, of that deep secret that never been talked never been discussed he's screaming again and what you're gonna do now? Look at you, you're like a boat without a sailor in the, in the heart of the sea, in the depths of the sea, and there's no one to save you, and except of screaming, what can you do? And you must, to go back, it's, 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 you, you went too deep, now it's too far. And to continue, you're continuing into the darkness, into the night, into the storm, and you see how much heart that huge parent, parent, person is, is, is holding how much intention he has. And, and from that we should learn the lesson for our lives. Because all of us, we have such a desire to do things for Hashem and to succeed. And if you are always going to count on your logic, you won't achieve anything. If you will try to, to deal with your life based on people's experts' opinions and assumptions, you're not going to make no step in your life. Never, ever going to make no step of uh, never going to progress, never going to achieve anything. 
Only when a person is ready to throw himself to the depths of the sea and to move forward and the, the, the area of, 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 of what that you will choose to, to work on, to achieve, of your, your desires, your, your holy will, is not important at all. If you want to build a house, if you want to, to, to raise your children in a certain way, if you want to get married, if you want to make aliyah, to go back to the Holy Land of Israel, it doesn't matter at all in which direction you will put your heart, you will put your effort in that direction. The main thing that is important is that you will know that everything is following after your will. And you should not give up on your dreams. Should not. A few days ago, I, I, I saw a comment on, I think it was on YouTube, one of the videos that, I, uh, that, that we upload on YouTube, and there was a student, a person that, that wrote in that comment <clears throat> that I was talking about not giving up on your dreams and never give up on your dreams. And, and she said, I just finished watching a video of a rabbi that said in his class that if you see that you desire something and Hashem doesn't give that thing to you, so it means that it's not for you and you need to move on in your life and to find something else. And she said it was like poison to my soul. I didn't know what to like, what? To give up on my dreams? <laughs> and then she found my video and it was such a relief for her. It was like... The, the opposite opinion. She said, how can you turn off the, 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 the passion of a soul to achieve, to find answer to her questions? Now today, and that's my problem, and it's my problem because I made it to be my problem. Today in this generation, we're surrounded in such thick darkness that everyone, including everyone, are lost. Everyone. And in the time of the flood, it's written that the water were covering even the highest mountains. Even the peak of the highest mountains were covered with, with water. Now today, there is a flood of sadness, of confusions, of... of of foreign thoughts, of anger, of bad, bad, negative thoughts and, 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 and ways of, of behavior that are covering the world. And this is the flood that we're experiencing today. And unfortunately, even the highest mountains, that those are the big leaders that's supposed to lead our people, our souls, are also covered with those um, foreign thoughts, with the negativity, with anger and fears and all kinds of, of lackings that are showing to us that you don't have no one to count on except of Hashem. And the way to be saved from the flood is by getting into the ark, into the Noah ark. Now, what is Noach Ark today? Where is that? You can go to the synagogue, someone will tell you it's a synagogue, you'll go to the synagogue, you can hear Lashon Ra in the synagogue. You can hear a rabbi that is teaching in the synagogue. Nonsense, not, not words of wisdom. So you cannot be saved even in the synagogue. You can say, I'll go to Beit Midrash, the place that all the scholars and, and Talmidei Chachamim are sitting and learning Torah, and you can hear gossip and to see bad behaviors and bad manners over there as well, and everyone desiring only to say mezonot and she'akol ni'abid varon, another cup of coffee. And you ask yourself, what am I doing here? That's the environment. It's not Nach art. It's not saving me from the flood of sadness, of, 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 of depression, of anger. So when you need to get inside that ark, there is only one place that for me as a person 
it sounds like that you will really gonna get inside into it. It's into your inside. Because even if I as a person will go to the most inner room in my house, let's say, I will go to that room. So that room is external for me. I need to go and to walk toward that room. Even if it's a synagogue, the synagogue is an external place, it's outside. I need to leave my house and to walk in that path, in that road, few, few streets until I will see the synagogue and then I need to go into... It's out there, it's not inside. But Hashem is telling us, Betoch Ami Anochi Yoshevet, I live inside of you. Asuli Mikdash Veshachanti Betocham, I live inside of your souls inside of your hearts and that's the inner place that the person can get into if he's willing to save his soul from the flood of foreign thoughts sadness and negativity so it's a war it's a real real war when you see that all the world are staying outside the ark and all the world are finding solutions in the external, in the outside world. People are trying to pile money and to save money and to make money. People are going and consulting with doctors, with lawyers, with all kinds of experts. Even if you want to get married today, you have people that will explain to you how you should get married. Like simple things, you cannot do anything once, like 2000 years ago, 500, I don't know. 500 you wanted to build a house you go you build a house you maybe you consult with your friends with someone that built one house his own house probably today you can't move a finger without consulting and learning and you need the person to guide you you your 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 hands are tied behind your back and you're limited today in ways that you cannot move but hashem wants you to understand the lesson because of that Today you want to learn Torah. People will tell you, you need someone to teach you. You need someone to guide you. You need someone to, to, you need to come, join to my yeshiva, to his yeshiva. You must sit and to be in this class and in that class. And you want to convert. Okay, so Avraham Avinu walked to Jerusalem. <laughs> like that was his conversion. He went deep and he found Hashem. Today you want to convert. Okay, so you have a list of duties, of obligations, and you have rules. The world is limiting you. And you need to understand why Hashem made it like that. Why you really need to go through those lists of, of, of difficulties. Why you need to go through that list of, of challenges. Why to build a house, it's such a mission. Why to buy property, it's such a mission. Why Hashem made all those things for us, so hard in all of our life aspects. You want to be healthy, you need to watch yourself from this, from that. This is healthy today and tomorrow there's going to be a long article that is telling you that it's pure poison and lethal and you cannot touch it and you thought that this is the most healthiest thing in the world. The world is confusing us and making the world harder and harder just because that Hashem wants us to find ourselves that we have only one solution to go deep into the inner truth of our hearts and to find their only real connection to the truth, to reality, to reality. The truth is not a, a divine concept that is above the clouds. The truth is honesty, is reality. If that's a table, so that's a table. If that's a Sefer Torah, that's a Sefer Torah. If that's a camera or a phone, it's a camera or a phone. It's only one thing that it is it. There is only one truth. If you want to say that uh, those are matches, this is a match, so there is only one thing you can say on it that will be the truth. It's a match. But lies you can make up as many as you want. You can say, no, it's a spoon. What are you talking about? It's a knife. No, it's a house. It's the key for your success. You, like whatever you want, you can say about it. And they're all going to be a bunch of lies. But there's only one truth. The real truth about this thing is his truth. Now about yourself, it's the same thing. 
You just need to find the truth about who that you are, about the nature of your creation. You just need really to check who you are and to find out that thing for yourself and to recognize your true self and to become it. And for that you need some quiet, for that you need some dedication, for that you need some work. And because that it's time of flood, because that the world is surrounding you and everyone are offering to you new ways um, to find solutions for your life, you must have a career, you must um, have a profession, you must work on this, you must work on that, you must take care of yourself, you must do this, you must whatever. Because of that, you're going all the time to all those directions and you're losing yourself while choosing other people's opinions. Because no matter how righteous they will be and how pure they will be, they will always be external. They will always come from your outside and will tell you things to pull you to their direction. And you must watch yourself from that. I must watch myself from that. And must believe in myself that if I will go against the stream and I will go to find out who I really am and what is my, my real connection with my Creator, the one that created me, I will be answered. I will find the answer. Even if everyone else are telling me no, I need to know that I need to go all the way in my inner search and never to back off from my dream to become my true self. And that's the only real commandment of Hashem Midbarach, of the Creator, to us. This is the only will of the Creator now. While a person now, let's say that your mother, she wants you to be healthy, and we're saying the only thing that your mother cares of is that you will be healthy, let's say so. So, inside of that will, there are many other things that are included. Okay, so you need to take care of your sleep and your eating habits and you need to wash yourself and clean yourself. Many, many paragraphs will build that chapter that calls healing, that you need to be healthy. Great, wonderful. So also when I'm saying that Hashem wants only one thing from you and that it is that you will find your inner source, your soul and become who that He created you to be, there are many, many things that, that are involved in that. You need to find who you are in the mornings, in the noon, in the evenings, in the nights, in the middle of the night, before of dawn. And then you need to check and find who you are while eating. What are you eating? Are you aware to yourself? And why are you eating? The, there are many things to think. Your career, your financials, your confidence in Hashem, your faith, relationship with people. Based on what? Based on love, based on fear, based on, on, on desires, based on, 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 on foreign things. All those things are required for us to find the inner point of, or the central point of our being, that in the end of, of that search we will find our true selves. But, if really a person wants to find himself, he needs to throw himself, like those righteous people, to the depths of the sea, and to be willing even to drown and to die in that inner search and not to lose touch with truth and reality. Now, in the beginning of our conversation today, we spoke about this issue of lifetimes, and this is a key that answers to, to many of our difficult hours, because many, many times we're facing situations that we don't know what, what, what is the real meaning of those situations. A person can find himself so lost and so confused, people are, are, are being hit in, in, in accidents and people are getting sick and people are losing like all their money, properties, people are finding themselves like in the speed of light, divorced with three kids out of, of the house, like crazy situations and I'm not saying you're you, blaming you, you're right or wrong or whatever, a person can find himself in very hard situations without understanding how he came to that situation. Like, what in the world am I doing here? How did I came here? 
And the answer on, on many of those situations depends in the secret of lifetimes. To know that thing, that the Creator is supervising on us and He brought us after a very long and precise calculation and trial, bringing us to the exact position that is required for us to achieve completion and good attributes to fix ourselves completely and to become real people of the Creator, servants and soldiers and righteous and dedicated to Him, body, spirit and heart, completely. And He knows exactly what is needed for us to fix us and to bring us to the, to the, to, to, to the moment of our success that we will become righteous. Now, in this process, there are many, many humiliations and many, many challenges and difficulties that we're going through. And many of, many of us are, are struggling and fighting with, with those foreign thoughts, with sadness and with depression and with confusions and doubts in faith. And the solutions that we're finding outside, like we said, are not really answering our questions. Because our questions and our doubts are very, very deep. And coming because of our life experience and very painful experience that we experienced in our lives. And for that we're suffering. And when someone is offering you to go somewhere and do something that will make you happy, it doesn't answer your inner pain and it doesn't solve your problems, even if it was joyful, even if it was nice. And I'm not talking about drugs and alcohol and parties. I'm not talking about going to the beach. I'm talking about even deep answers. Even a person that says, okay, you know what, I, I, I must start learning Torah. I want to learn Torah. And he's taking himself to the synagogue, to the Batei Midrashot, and he's sitting and learning, or even online, he's watching classes and opening books in his free time, and he's trying to do the best. And suddenly he finds himself that even while learning Torah, he's being drifted to foreign places. He's finding himself that even the Torah is distracting his thoughts from taking the real responsibility that is needed from him as a husband, as a wife, as a man, as a woman, as a, as a parent, doesn't matter. Even when he is trying to do something that for all opinions will be considered as good, he's finding him finding himself confused and lost and, 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 and losing his hands and his legs. In the world of Torah, in the world of health, a person can say, you know what, I'm going to take care of my diet and I'm going to eat only healthy, only green, only vegetables, whatever. And he finds himself getting weaker and, 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 and less healthy. And like, what's going on? So what's the solution? That's why I'm saying that everyone must work very, very hard on their self-awareness on developing a real deep and honest relationship with the Almighty, with the Creator. Because without that inner connection, you are lost because the water of the flood are covering even the peak of the highest mountains in this generation. You understand? So even if you're finding yourself climbing to the peak reaching the top of the highest mountains, sitting only learning Torah, and not just regular Torah, Kabbalah, and you learn Kabbalah by righteous holy people, not by criminals that are scamming after your wallet. Talking about righteous people that sit days and night in Batei Midrashot, and dedicating their lives to Limuda Torah with power, with the right intention, and you're gonna find yourself to be one of their students and your house is still broken and your boat is still drowning and your children are falling to weird places and your wife she's not with you at all and like what am I doing here 
What's going on? I'm not sailing, no, I'm just drowning. That's why I'm saying that even while trying and doing the maximum that you can in the physical world, connecting yourself to good people, trying to find good and kosher sources for financials, for economic, for making money, trying to walk in the, in the most secure and, and innocent path of them all, still the real key for confidence and for guarantee for your life to be balanced and successful is to build an inner connection with the Creator. And that is the only way to achieve happiness and confidence and to have some balance in our lives. Because even if you'll have a house that is, is built out of diamonds and rubies and, and golden fences surrounding it, you won't be safe. Billionaires can be killed in a moment, can be stabbed, can be cheated by their family members. Like, who can protect you in Judgment Day? If you're far from the Creator, if you are far from, 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 from the one that can really protect you, like he was protecting King David when everyone was surrounding him, if you're still far from him, if you're still far, far from your soul, if you're still far from who that you really are, you're exposed to, to the effect of the external world and it can damage the person. That's why, even though that we are obligated to keep on waking up in the mornings and go bring money and to work and to do whatever and to pray and to keep all to our mitzvot and do every good thing that we can, Except of that, we must dedicate time in our lives for that inner connection to find the Creator, the Supervisor of our life in our inner awareness. And then He will bless you in all your actions. Then He will bless you in the field and He will bless you in your house. He will bless your relationships and He will bless you while you're eating, while you're drinking, while you're sleeping. He will protect you. And His wings will be spread and open and protecting you because you attached yourself to Him. Because before, and not only with your mouth, because before you attach yourself to Him with your heart, with your mind, with your soul, you're separated from Him even if you built your house inside the temple, on Harabait. It means nothing. When the Creator destroyed His temple, the temple was built in that hour. Even the temple was not able to protect Himself from Hashem in the day of anger. You understand? Even if you're so-called righteous, even if you're so-called pure, even if you're holding in high levels and you're learning Torah and you're praying in the synagogue and you put filin and you do amazing things and you give charity, even 50% of, of, of your income, there is no guarantee that it, will con that it will protect you and redeem you in Judgment Day. There is only one thing that for sure can save you from all kinds of judgments and it's your confidence in the Creator Himself. It's your faith in Him. It's your connection to Him. It's the fact that you will call Him in Judgment Day. It's the fact that you will be with Him and lean on Him and not on no one else. That's the only confidence that guarantees your salvation. And every other kind of confidence in rabbis, in righteous people, blessings, whatever, it doesn't work. I've been there, done that. It doesn't work. Not that righteous people are not righteous. They are righteous. Just Hashem wants for every individual something that is even higher than a physical relationship and connection even to the most righteous one. We're the most righteous one of them all. 
You think that he's righteous. You think that you know something. But the mission of your life is to connect yourself to the Creator, not by flesh and bones, not by human beings. That's why the body of Moshe, been buried by Hashem, has been buried by Hashem in the valley, in a place that no one knows. And where is he? Where is that man? Where is his grave? I want to pray on his tzion. I want to pray on his tombstone. I want to beg that he will pray for... He's hidden. Why is he hidden? Because he realized that if he will take us into the Holy Land and if he will stay with us, we will lose the purpose of our creation to find the Creator on our own on every single thing that Moshe had an issue, a disagreement with Hashem, he knew how to fight with Hashem. He went battling with Hashem, fighting with Him, arguing with Him, bringing evidence and proofs, and even threatening Hashem. He did whatever it takes to change every decree that he felt that was wrong came out of the mouth of Hashem, he was canceling decrees on right and on left. Until one day Hashem told him, listen Moses, listen Moshe, you are not getting into the Holy Land. And Moshe wanted to go in. He wanted to build Beit HaMikdash. He wanted to complete the redemption. He wanted to deliver Am Israel to their home and to build the chosen place, the chosen house for Hashem. He wanted to build Beit HaBchira. So he started praying and begging to Hashem to cancel that decree until Hashem came to him and told him, be quiet, stop praying. And then Moshe closed his mouth and stopped asking, why? Why? Why you stopped asking? So Hashem told you to be quiet. So what? You can bring an evidence and a reason for you to keep on, on, on arguing. You can argue on that as well. No, Moshe realized that Hashem got a higher intention, a deeper reason to the fact that He's telling him, you cannot go with them to the Promised Land. You must stay outside. Because all of our nation were leaning and counting on that man Moses. And all of our trust was based on his greatness and on his connection to the Creator. Because we believed in Hashem and in Moshe. We had a faith in him and in Hashem. In the person, the righteous man, and Hashem. And with the time we lost our inner connection to the Creator. And we were basing our faith on the commandments and on the religion and on the orders. And we were obeying, we were doing, we were trying to fulfill our obligation. But we lost our spiritual connection to the Creator that lives with you, that lives inside of us that wakes you up in the morning. And when He wakes you up in the morning, you forget to say, thank you. You read from the Siddur, Modea, Ani, Lefanecha, Melech, Vekayam, and you don't even know what you're saying. But you need to understand why in the Siddur it's written, Modea, Ani, Lefanecha, first thing to say in the morning. Because you need to thank the one that woke you up, and it's Hashem. Not to thank Him with your lips, not to thank Him with your mouth. To thank Him from your heart means that you, first of all, in the morning, must remind yourself, who woke you up? It's Him. Who gave you the food? Baruch Ata Hashem. We're blessing. When you're blessing Hashem on food, on grapes, on bread, on meat, on, on, on drinks, on whatever, you're saying to Hashem, Barach, you are the source of blessings in the world and I'm thanking you for giving me that thing or that thing. While just saying those words doesn't mean anything. Might even count as a lie when you don't have the right intention. What are you saying? What are you mumbling? What are you just throwing, spitting words out of your mouth? And I'm not saying don't do that. 
I'm just saying look deeper to find your inner connection to what that you do, to what that you're obligated to do. Because Hashem wants the main thing for you not to lose and it's spirituality, it's your inner connection, it's your divine soul that is connecting you to Him. And if you are cut and divided because your faith is lacking and your inner confidence in, in Him is not complete, so even while keeping so-called Torah or mitzvot, you just keep on drifting to the external world, to a foreign world of, of distractions and, and, and lies and darkness. Even if you are being called religious or frum or an FFB or whatever and people call you a rabbi, or nonsense, it's nonsense. Titles in the mouth of flesh and bones, it doesn't mean anything. People can respect you in this world and you will be so humiliated in heaven. So humiliated. And people can humiliate you in this world and in heaven you will be considered as such a righteous and pure soul. No one knows. No one can realize which heights you achieved you get, got because of your real inner deeper effort of being righteous and being nice and being pure, having the, 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 the grace in your mind all day long and how to, how to keep kamocha, to love everyone, to support and to love and to cherish and to care. And that was your heart. And all day long you were busy in being the best person that you can to everyone, never to insult no one, never to ever to hurt. And people were disgracing you and insulting you and humiliating you. And you were not considered as a big shot, a righteous man in this world. But no one knows your real spiritual level, how much really you count in the eyes of heaven. So that's why all the world that is surrounding us cannot be so important in our eyes that we will consider people's opinions so much and people's thoughts so much and people's assumptions so much. We must find our inner connection to the Creator, to the one that gives us life and to try to tune ourselves to the source of life that is nurturing and feeding us from inside. You're alive not because the food you ate. You're alive not because the drinks you drank. You're alive because Hashem gave you life. Because you are now wired from an inner source of energy that is supplying life into your corpse, into your dead body, into this waste, this piece of junk that you are. What's that? One germ can kill a person. Like one virus can kill a person, one cut can, can infect and kill a person. Something that no one will be able even to recognize can take out the soul from a human being. Like what are you? Nothing. Earth. Mud. Something that is being rotten and feeding the, 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 the worms underground. Nothing. But when Hashem is choosing to put a divine soul inside of that piece of junk, wow, a noble human being, suddenly you're so righteous and you can make such holy actions and you can save lives and you can talk Torah and you can pray with the right intention and righteous people can decree and make wonders in the world and, and like, what is, is that suddenly? Higher than an angel. How can you become higher than an angel? Because the nature of your spiritual creation is coming down from a higher source than the source of the angels. So what's our problem? That we're not aware to who that we are in the roots of our creation. And that's why I'm going to keep on screaming on that topic until we will all together well, pay attention. And the first one I'm talking to is myself. Trust me, I'm working hard on myself. I'm just sharing my inner thoughts, my inner struggles on how to always remember Hashem. Because like I said many times before, I was never disappointed from Hashem just only when I had expectations for other things to happen, then I was disappointed. 
But always, 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 really, when I was praying, I saw wonders. I saw Hashem is supervising on my life in so many ways and aspects that I saw the hand of Hashem. I'm a person that finding it hard to forget Hashem. Because I saw His presence so many times, I saw so many wonders, so many miracles, so many of my prayers been answered. So I saw His existence, I felt His presence in my life. I'm not doubting on His existence ever. When I am being frustrated, when I am building buildings of imaginations, of false dreams, on things that I think that should happen today, but really Hashem wants them to happen tomorrow, and then I'm disappointed why Hashem haven't answered my prayer today, while just ignoring the fact that Hashem is now building it for tomorrow. And there's no problem with my desire to be answered, just that the vessel still need some work, investment. And that's when a person is falling to sadness and to be disappointed for Hashem. Only because that he doesn't aim to the divine will of the Creator that is to bring you to completion and to build proper and worthy vessels for you really to enjoy the bounty that will come from inside. Spiritual bounty. Based on an inner connection, inner faith and inner trust in Hashem. And for that cause, and for that purpose, we need to aim all of our efforts, all of our power, to become one with the Almighty from within, from inside. The way to do that is to attach yourself to the truth, to reality. You believe that there is a Creator, now what does it mean? It means that you can talk to Him. It means that you can pray. It means that He can make wonders. It doesn't mean that you need to run and to obey to commandments of other people that will command you to run like a crazy rabbit in a, in a, in a, in a, in a maze, lost and confused, afraid to be electrified. No. Find your Creator, the one that made you. Learn how to walk with your eyes closed. Learn how to pray with your eyes closed. Learn how to communicate through your soul. Use your brain, your mind, your heart, inner organs that have been given to you to build and establish an honest relationship that's based on love and trust with the one that made you exactly like you are. Because of very deep and important reasons, gave you tools of thoughts, senses to feel, that you will feel and, 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 and use them. For that He created you as He created you. For you to use the spiritual tools that have been given to you. Good luck. I'm praying for you every day that all your prayers will be answered. And Bezat Hashem, I'm putting all my trust in Hashem that He will show to us the greatest redemption, more than we can imagine and even hope for. Thank you. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always, and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.